Okay, so now um, we're gonna talk about color enhancing shampoos. These are gonna be classified also as temporary hair colors because they have shampoo ingredients. So they combine the surfactant base with a basic color pigment, similar to a temporary color rinse. Um, I consider them temporary colors because if you take a, um, a purple shampoo that does have color molecules, some of them may be a little high in pH, so you have to be mindful of that. It might not be good for porous hair. Um, remember the rules of porosity. Porosity can make a temporary hair color permanent and a permanent hair color temporary. If someone has very porous hair, don't think you can just take a beautiful red um, or pink um, temporary shampoo and shampoo a client's hair with that. You'll stain their hair and make it a very scary color and it will be traumatic for the client. Um, color enhancing shampoos are used to brighten, add a slight hint of color, and to eliminate unwanted color tones such as gold or brassiness and overly cool strands. Know that um, with color shampoos, a lot of shampoos that are professional don't brighten the hair. Other shampoos that are non-professional claim to. You want to make sure you're reading the ingredients and if they say peroxide, don't use that in the salon because that can ruin other chemical services and cause a lot of breakage. Um, Sunin is an example of that. So shampoo for hair pieces and wigs. Um, know that wigs and extensions, they might have their own specific shampoo that the manufacturer recommends. They might sell it. Their special wig shampoo or wig cleaners. Typically, a lot of the pH balance products are safe to use on most wigs and extensions. You just want to reach out and do your due diligence and talk to the company and see what if you can use certain products on the pieces without buying their own. Typically, most of them would be very nice and say, oh yeah, just use a pH balance shampoo or use a moisturizing one. Um, shampooing clients with special needs, know that the shampooing a client with special needs is very similar to shampooing anyone else. The only difference is that if they're in a wheelchair, that can be challenging. They make specialized sinks. Some sinks you can adjust at their correct height. Um, so just be aware of that. Also know that some clients will arrive to the shampoo with freshly shampooed hair um, the night before, so you want to be mindful of that. If their hair is too clean or they have a sensitive scalp, that can hurt if you're putting like a high lift hair color on that. So always just ask around and like figure that out. So now we're gonna talk about conditioners and what is in a conditioner. So know that conditioner is a special chemical agent that is applied to the hair to deposit protein or moisturizer to help restore the hair strength, to give the hair body and to protect the hair against possible breakage. Conditioners are temporary remedy or can be a temporary remedy or cosmetic fix to hair that feels dry or appears damaged. They can only repair hair to a certain extent. Conditioners cannot improve the quality of new hair growth. So know that conditioners are not going to magically, you know, make bald hair grow again, that they're not going to repair hair that's falling out and damaged. They can make the hair feel nice by mimicking the natural cuticle by forcing the cuticle closed or just making it very moisturized. Know that conditioning treatments, conditioning treatments can restore luster, shine, and manageability and strength while damaged hair grows out long enough to be cut off and replaced with new healthy hair. Because of frequent shampooing, the use of thermal styling tools and chemical services, conditioning is a must for clients who care about their hair. Know that there's three basic types of conditioners. The most common that we think about like shampoo conditioner is rinse out conditioner. This is also known as a cream rinse um, or finishing rinse. They are rinsed out after their work through the hair for detangling. There's treatment or repair conditioner, which is known as your deep conditioner. Those are masks that you're gonna leave on. Typically with deep conditioners or treatments, you're gonna shampoo the hair first, apply the deep treatment, rinse it out, and then follow it up with a rinse out conditioner, which will seal in that treatment. They may require the application of heat. Most people just take a um, shampoo cap, they'll put it on with a conditioning mask and put the client under the dryer. And then we have leave-in conditioner, which is applied to the hair not rinsed out. A little of leave-in goes a long way. It's usually a spray-on solution. Most conditioners contain silicone along with moisture binding humectants. Humectants are substances that absorb moisture or promote the retention of moisture. Silicone reflects light and makes the hair appear shiny. Other ingredients reduce frizz, bulk up the hair. Most treatment and leave-in contain proteins which penetrate the cortex and reinforce the hair shaft from within. Know that um, conditioners, detangling rinses, and cream rinses smooth the cuticle or coat the hair shaft to achieve healthy looking hair. Remember that the cortex makes up 90% of a hair strand. The cortex can be penetrated with a protein conditioner product that is designed to penetrate the cortex and reinforce the hair shaft from within to temporarily reconstruct the hair. Moisturizing conditioners also contain humectants that attract moisture to the hair and are also absorbed in the cortex. So typically with um, protein and moisture, you want to balance the both. It's not that one is better than the other. Too much protein will make the hair very brittle and will snap it. Too much moisture will make the hair too stretchy and can snap it. So yes, you can overuse deep conditioner. That will not only fade your color, but it will make your hair feel very slimy and break off. Use deep conditioner once a week or every other week as you see fit. And that's uh, something you'll figure out on your own. 
Um, a protein conditioner is um, what we'll use to go in there and reinforce the hair, so know that for your test. Um, other conditioning agents you need to be familiar with are spray-on thermal protector. This is applied to the hair prior to any thermal surfaces to protect the hair from the harmful effects of blow drying, electric rollers, and hot irons. Thermal protectants is a must now that we have the technology. It's why our hair is able to look so healthy. Back in the day, we didn't have these, and what happened is people would fry their hair off with the iron. I remember I had a friend tell me the 80s was the best time to do hair because you would just have the clients flip over and you can just snip off all the dry damaged hair. Scalp conditioner, it's usually found in a cream base and is often used to soften and improve in the, help of the, the health of the scalp. It contains moisturizing and emollient ingredients. Medicated scalp lotion is a conditioner that promotes the healing of the scalp. Scalp astringent lotion will remove oil accumulation from the scalp and are used after the scalp treatment or and before the styling. Know that um, they have a whole chart right here in this chart. I'm not going to read everything, but I'll give you the gist of it. They give you the hair type, straight, wavy, extremely curly, and dry or damaged hair from perms, colors, relaxers, blow drying, sun, and hot irons. Because yes, the environment can damage your hair just as bad as chemicals. So typically, um, straight hair that's a fine, medium, and coarse, you want to uh, give them moisturizing shampoo. Hair that's on the finer side, you want a volumizing shampoo. Um, wavy, curly, and extremely curly hair that's fine. Um, you want to use some protein, spray on protectors for fine hair. For medium, um, wavy, curly hair, you want pH balance shampoo. And for coarse hair, you want to do a moisturizing shampoo. For dry, damaged hair, you always want to think, um, keep the hair very gentle. Um, use products that are made for color treated hair or products that are made for color treated hair that include moisture. There's still the big debate on there whether sulfates um, fade the hair or not. Um, one side of the science says that yes, sulfates are bad, it's a salt. Other side says no, it's the pH of it. So there is truth to really both those sides. It's really dependent on is your product pH balanced because that's really more of the deal breaker. Your book also talks about deep conditioning treatments, which is also known as hair masks or a conditioning pack. They are defined as a chemical mixture of concentrated protein and intensive moisturizer. It penetrates the cuticle layer and it is the chosen therapy when a moisturizing or protein treatment is desired. And the last section of this book will talk about draping. Think about the importance of draping because we often overlook this. How many times have you been to a salon or have done hair at home and you've gotten water all down your back and how uncomfortable that feels, especially when it's cold out and you have this wet back? Or you've gotten color all over your skin of your neck or your collar. That's not only an annoyance, but it's something that can be completely avoided if you carefully drape the client and you take the time to do that. Know that there are two types of draping. The first is a shampoo draping and the second is a chemical service draping. A shampoo draping is also called a wet draping, and it's a draping used when the client is in the salon for a shampoo styling or a shampoo and haircut service. Two terry towels are used to protect the client, one under the shampoo cape and one over the cape, just like in a chemical service. Once the shampoo service is complete and before the hair cutting or hair styling service begins, the terry towels are removed and replaced with a proper neck strip and are secured with a hair cutting or styling cape. Know that a chemical draping is used for clients who will have a chemical service or treatment and who will not have a shampoo before the service, such as when a hair coloring permanent wave or a chemical relaxer is used. I'm gonna argue the permanent wave one and say that most perms today, you have to shampoo the hair before you perm because you, you water wrap. This is referring to the old style perm where you'd wrap the hair when it's dry on lotion wrap. Most perms are not like that. You have to do them on clean hair. Um, in a chemical draping, the client is draped with two terry cloth towels, one under the cape and one over the cape, and the towels remain on the neck until the service is completing, completed and they're regularly checked for dryness and replaced by a stylist. In short, the only difference between the a chemical and the shampoo drape is in the chemical drape, you're keeping the towel on. In a shampoo drape, you're taking the towel out and replacing it with a neck strip for when you're cutting the hair. I'll give you the guys the real world experience. Most of the time in the salon, you're just doing the chemical drape and doing it for the whole you know, time through. We typically don't really use neck strips in the salon. Um, they give you an activity of um, pairing off of clients, practicing those people skills, practicing um, talking together and recommending products for one another. This is a good thing to do in a controlled environment with your instructor because then when you have your clients come in, you're able to recommend products to them. Um, so always wanna, you know, and also take the time too to read the products that you're using, become familiar with the products that you use in your school or your salon so you can better sell them. The book gives you a three-part procedure. The one, so it's really three steps. It's pre-planning the actual service and then post-care. Think of it like that. Think of the pre-planning as getting organized, getting everything clean, neat, and tidy. Think about what you're gonna do. Um, two is the actual service, how you're going to shampoo, um, tying in what we learned here, what products you're going to use, what are you going to recommend to them, how you're going to talk to the client. 
And then part three is gonna be the post service. So that's kind of like the at home maintenance, what you're gonna give the client to go um, take home, anything like that. It's really um, just, I almost like a common sense, but it's something to be mindful of because we always kind of forget this. So know that in the um, pre-service procedure, you wanna have a special designated area to clean your stuff. You don't wanna have like, you know, something that you're gonna clean at your station because that's gonna take up space. So use a designated area with a sink. Um, what else? Always be self-aware, you know, are you wearing too strong of a clone? Do you have offensive body odor? Things like that, because that will offend a client and make them not want to come back. Um, is the music in the salon appropriate? Um, you don't want rap music that has a lot of cursing in it if you're working with the mature client. Always know how to greet the client. First thing is you want to make some small talk, greet them, get to know them. And then um, they give you the whole list of the dry hair and scalp treatments. It pretty much went over what I stated earlier in the first video. Except I just want to give you guys a little heads up um, because this is something that we really don't do unless you have a special machine. For the dry hair and scalp treatment on page 329, which is procedure 15-4, um, the dry hair and scalp treatment, it says to use a high frequency current like we talked about in light and electrocution, not electrocution, um, electrotherapy. You can use um, the same Tesla high frequency current to stimulate the scalp. Most places don't do that. Um, only the high end places really do. You don't want to use a high frequency current on hair treated with tonics or lotions that contain alcohol. Um, I'm assuming because it can cause a reaction or cause the hair to get some kind of adverse thing. Um, most salons don't use them, so you don't have to really have to worry about them. Um, also, read the service tip that says some anti-dandruff treatments are alcohol-based and should not be used in conjunction with infrared lamps because the alcohol can dry out the hair or there might be a fire risk. And that should be that for the chapter. Scalp massage, I'll do in a probably a whole separate video. I just wanna get all the theory on here so you guys can get this. Just become familiar with the procedures. Um, over time, you just become familiar and you do your own thing. You just wanna make sure you get the basic manipulations in, like massage the hairline, like that, go across. Another little tip I just wanna give you guys, if your clients have very thick, curly, wavy hair that knots up, you don't wanna take the hair and lump it all together tend to get in the habit of going back in one direction and not pulling the hair forward. Never do this because that will, like if you rub your hair like that, that will create instant dreadlocks on really damaged hair, dry hair, wavy hair, and knot it up to where you can't get it out. Always get in the habit of shampooing in one direction to always go back and never take the hair and pull it up. Because we're working on our mannequins, I'm gonna give you another tip. Our mannequins like the Deluxe Debra, if you've ever done this and you have a bad batch, and you shampoo the hair and you vig vigorously shampoo it like a person, you'll create matting that is so bad you can't get it out. So what I always say with the mannequins when you're shampooing, practice shampooing when they're dry, but when they're wet, shampoo down in one direction. So that is that, um, and that will be it for the shampoo chapter. Make sure you know the stuff, focus on the um, glossary because this terminology is important. The next chapter we're gonna go into is going to be the hair cutting chapter, chapter 16. It is a lengthy chapter. There's a lot of terminologies, so it's gonna be a longer series. And then after that, we'll get into um, hair styling and then braiding and all of that. So um, get some rest, take your um, break if you're gonna watch this all in one. And next time we're gonna be getting into it with hair cutting.